Welcome back, folks, to another J Lamb Bio exclusive. Today, I am here to talk to you about the ideal gas law. Yes, I know you're just as excited as I am. We're going to be looking at PubNerd. I know you know about PubNerd, but we're going to dive in a little bit deeper and explore all the different types of variables that we can look at with PV equals NRT. So get ready, get excited. It's going to be a very fun video for us today. So what are our learning objectives for today? Well, you should be able to calculate a variety of variables utilizing the ideal gas law. Yes, we're not just going to be looking at simple pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. We're going to be looking at a variety of different topics within PV equals NRT to be able to explore and discover. Here's some vocabulary terms for the video. We'll be talking about ideal gas law. We've already talked a lot about combined gas law and STP, but make sure that you know all of your different units and we'll be ready to move forward. So don't stress out too much. You guys will be fine. So when we look at all of the variables from the previous video, we talked about pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. And what we had was P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. And we set them equal to each other. Well, we know that when we change one variable of a gas, all of the other respective variables change as well. We can set that equal to a constant value, that constant value being R, which you know is the gas constant, and that gives us the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. Now, one big question they typically get asked is, when do I use the ideal gas law versus using the combined gas law? Remember that the combined gas law focuses on the change of something in a gas. So you're given two pressures, two temperatures, two mole amounts, something along those lines. In the ideal gas law, you're typically only given one of each of those. So as a result, you will be able to differentiate between utilizing the combined gas law and utilizing the ideal gas law. Now, hopefully you remember that pressure units come in all different shapes and sizes. Pressure units can differ, so you may need to convert or change the gas constant that you use. One ATM is equal to 760 torr or 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, and our value with ATM is 0 0.0821, and with millimeters of mercury, it is 62.4. Do keep in mind that your volume needs to be in liters and needs to be in moles, and temperature must remain in Kelvin. So typically, we only change R based on the unit of pressure that we are looking at. Let's suppose that 3.00 grams of nitrogen is placed in a 2.00 liter container. The pressure is measured to be around 450 millimeters of mercury. What is the temperature of the gas in degrees Celsius? So, a couple things going on here. First off, we need to identify if we are going to use the combined gas law or the ideal gas law. Now, in this instance, because nothing is changing, we are going to be using the ideal gas law, which remember is P V equals N R T. Awesome. So let's take a look at the information we do have. Uh, two liters, so we have a volume. We have a pressure. The question is asking for temperature. I can get a value of R for millimeters of mercury. Remember the R value for that is 62.4. But I'm not given moles. However, I am given grams. Well, me being the smart chemistry person that I am, know that you can convert grams to moles using the molar mass. And where do we find that information? Wait for it, wait for it, periodic table. So in this instance, we're going to take our gram number and we're going to convert to moles. So we have 3.00 grams of nitrogen. This actually writes pretty well. Grams on the bottom of the next step to moles. Remember that it is N2. So we're going to take that 14.01 we're going to make it 28.02. Awesome. Let's do some math. We do the math. We get our mole number. And now we can plug into PV equals NRT. So our pressure, 450.0. Our volume, which is 2 liters, equals our mole number. Gas constant, R times an unknown value for T. Plug in and solve. So for our temperature, we get 134 Kelvin, but remember it is asking for it in Celsius. So in order to convert that back to Celsius, we are gonna subtract 273.15. For a final temperature of negative 138 degrees Celsius. Pretty straightforward on how to do that type of problem, but there will be some more complex problems that I'm going to ask you to solve. Hee <laughs> hee. I'll be with you in just a moment. 
So I I'm sure you guys are really familiar with the ideal gas law. I'm not too stressed about that, but there's a couple things that we can actually add into this to make this just a little bit more interesting. Remember that we can solve for moles by dividing the mass by the molar mass on the periodic table. We can then substitute this in for n to be able to determine what the formula is for an unknown gas. Pretty awesome, isn't it? And if we know the molar mass of an unknown gas, then we can determine what the unknown gas is based on the molar mass that we provide. So here, if you look on the right-hand side, n equals m divided by big M. Little m is your mass. Big M is your molar mass. We plug that in for n, and we can actually solve for the molar mass by having big M on the left-hand side of the equation. So the molar mass will equal the mass times r times t divided by p times v. Let's do some practice problems with that as well. A steel cylinder contains 0 0.01378 kilograms of an unknown gas. Combustion analysis indicates the gas has the empirical formula of H2S. And the volume of the cylinder is 2.20 times 10 to the third milliliters, and the pressure inside is 3.42 times 10 to the third millimeters of mercury. What is the molecular formula of the gas if it is stored at 25 degrees Celsius? So we're still doing a PV equals NRT type of problem. The only difference here, though, is that we are going to substitute N for grams per mole by taking grams and divided by the molar mass. So remember, in order to do that, what we get is that our molar mass is equal to our mass in grams times RT divided by PV. Now, some of these formulas come in a little bit different form than what we're looking for, so we'll need to do some math here. So for example, our temperature here, we need to add 273.15, so we're looking at 298.15K. Uh, we have kilograms of an unknown gas, so we need to get that to grams. So we need to multiply by 1,000 to get 13.78 grams. Millimeters of mercury is perfectly fine. We just need to make sure that we remember our R value for millimeters of mercury is 62.4. And here we're given the volume of the cylinder, but it is in milliliters, so we must convert that to liters. So now that we have everything that we need, we just need to plug into the formula up above and solve. So our molar mass is going to equal grams, so 13.78, times R, 62.4, times T, 298.15, divided by our pressure, P, 3.42, times 10 to the third, times our volume, 2.2 liters. We plug in and solve, and we get our uh, molecular molar mass. So our molecular molar mass, <laughs> mm, <laughs> I'm stupid, is 34.07 grams per mole. Now what we need to do is, again, if remember we're doing empirical molecular formula, we compare that to the empirical molar mass of H2S, um, 32.06 plus 2 times 1.01. Well, we get 34.08. So that's our empirical molar mass. They are the same, roughly. So um, our molecular formula is the same as our empirical. H2S. So you can see how useful the ideal gas law can be in terms of figuring out other things aside from just PV equals NRT. All right, let's do one more practice problem just to ensure we're good to go. A sample of hydrogen gas is in an outdoor 1,000 gallon tank, 3.8 liters in a gallon. The temperature is negative 4.50 degrees Celsius, and the tank has a pressure of 32.6 atm. What is the mass of gas in kilograms in the tank? So we're going to be using that derived PV equals NRT, where we have our molar mass is equal to our mass times R times T over PV. So in this instance, we have our temperature here. Remember, that needs to go to Kelvin, so we're going to add 273.15.
So we're going to get 268.65 for our temperature. We're given a pressure, and since that is our pressure in ATM, we're going to use R as 0 0.0821. We have a 1,000 gallon tank. We also know we have 3.8 liters in a gallon, so we're going to take that 1,000. We're going to take that gallon and we're going to convert that to liters. So we're going to get 3,800 liters. So now we're just going to plug into the formula up above and solve. Before then, though, we need to know our molar mass so we can solve for M, our mass. We have hydrogen gas here. And looking at the periodic table, the molar mass is 2.02. .02. So we just plug these numbers in and solve. So we're going to start with 2.02. .02 equals our mass, remember that is in grams, times R, 0 0.0821, times T, 268.65. We're going to divide that by our pressure and our volume. We can now algebraically rearrange the equation and solve for M. So what we get for M is 11,300 grams. It does want it in kilograms, so we need to convert. So what we get is 1.13 kilograms. All right. So again, same concept of PV equals NRT. We can just rearrange some of the values to be able to solve for mass, molar mass, and those types of things. All right. Let's move on. The very last thing I want to reiterate, and I reiterated this in the first video, but it's really important that we understand this, is that the ideal gas law is nice, but it is not an accurate behavior of a real gas. Remember that real gas is taken into consideration the intermolecular forces and the size of the particles, and that plays a role in how the gas truly behaves. Gases behave more like an ideal gas at very low pressures. Reason being is that if the pressure of a gas is very low, then the molecules will be very far apart. Those molecules are very far apart then they won't interact with each other as much. Furthermore, if it's at a low pressure, typically that means that there's not very many moles of the gas either. So if they're very far apart and there are very few molecules of the gas in the particular tank, then they're less likely to interact with each other or take up space within the container. So you can see um, the most ideal gases are ones that are very, very small, and they're ones that are non-polar. Polar molecules, as you know, have higher intermolecular forces and therefore will interact with each other more in a gas environment. So do keep those things in mind. Hopefully you got quite a lot out of the video today. Um, I know I'm going to be spending a lot of time editing this out because I cracked my back like nine times, belched like 40 times, and I'm pretty sure I was interrupted by a bell and a couple of students. So um, I'm about to keep that in because, you know, that's life. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will get this out to you, and this will be the last part of our gas units. I know we're moving pretty quickly, but, you know, what's the old saying goes, move through life quickly. Happiness will be had by all. I'm pretty sure I just made that up. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Jaylen Bio, out.